I'm Livia Firth, and I believe passionately that we need to re-establish a just, fair, and healthy relationship with fashion. This is why we must understand the handprint, the human stories that bring us clothes and accessories. This journey has brought me up close to many supply chains around the world. And this time I'm off to Guatemala, where one million artisans produce fashion and textiles. It is said they are the soul of the country. Tragically, the livelihoods and skills reaching back to ancient civilizations are in danger of being wiped out on our watch. But a front line of resistance is forming, based on collaboration, knowledge sharing and a vision of sustainability. And so I join my fellow fashion campaigners on the shores of Lake Atitlan. Our trip would introduce us to Guatemalan artisans and offer us a glimpse of this fashionscape through their eyes. We need to develop a model of cultural tourism in order to give sustainability to patrimony, but also through the goods and services you sell to tourists. Having a good artisan offering is key in order to give sustainability to the patrimony. And Guatemala is such a place. We have about a million artisans. If we don't uh, give uh, economic opportunities and social development to this artisan uh, population, that they are, the craftsmanship will uh, be abandoned altogether. And that's what we think we have to avoid. Preservation of culture can only be accomplished through development opportunities. And we need to make sure that the one million artisans we have in Guatemala can thrive and survive and develop through their craft and that this uh, uh, becomes a way to, to preserve the culture into the future. In 2018, fashion entrepreneur Carmen Busquet launched the coalition Couture Lab with myself, Donna Karen, Marianne Hernandez and others. But why was this collaboration needed? The future is all about partnership, collaboration. And what we've been having is so many people that want to own the solution of the intellect. And we all realize what happens when 25 and 29 communities, they don't help each other. They've been kept apart. There is something beautiful about it because then they keep a unique identity and individuality, but there is something also very hard and very difficult about it when you want to bring them together. And what we have to accomplish is interdependence. Our goal as sustainable people that we care about sustainability is involve everybody. And so we head to San Juan to meet a group of Guatemalan artisans. Micaela gives us a lesson that demonstrates just how deeply the artisan skill set is rooted in the landscapes. In the association, we have 40 families benefited here. Every woman in their house works in the algodón and also the children. We learn from eight years old. I was sitting with my mother. I saw how we do it with my mother. ¿Alguna de ustedes quiere aprobarla? Aquí se gira el algodón jale poco a poco. How am I doing? It's difficult. It's muy difícil. Nosotros trabajamos cinco veces a malacata para que bien fino el hilo igual de este. Cuando hay luna llena, da este color. Sin la luna llena, este color. What Guatemala has is that when you look at the dyeing processes, everything is made from the bark of an avocado tree or the leaves of some other plant. There's so many chemicals that we in the garment industry are doing to, to mess up this world. Nosotros trabajamos con el tallo del banano. Sirven para fijar que no se distingue y lo cocinamos por dos horas. I come from a very, very old world, India. My family has been making textiles by hand for a hundred years. So we come from history and tradition. How do you take history and tradition and make it relevant to today so that you can make it economically successful and provide for your artisans? Mezclo con jugo de limón da un color rojo intenso. Antes se utilizaba el rojo porque solo había dos colores que se utilizaban. Nuestros ancestros iban a la costa a recolectar algodón y solo era el blanco y ellos conseguían 
lo que era la cochinilla. Entonces se teñían nuestros hilos con, eh, con el rojo y el blanco y un poquito de colores. Se utilizaba el rojo que representaba el, la fuerza del hombre, el amor. Entonces por eso es que fuimos cambiando ahorita y más nos basamos en nuestro medio. Todo lo que miramos, todo lo que, que, que sentimos nosotros. ¿Esto es volcanes? Volcanes, nubes todo lo que nos rodea. El cabello nos lo recogemos con la cinta. Algunos simples, que ya es para las mujeres casadas y ah. ya con más brillante para solteras <ríe> o un poco solteras. <ríe> But as we travel, I see that there are plenty of secondhand goods on sale too. Expert Cynthia Lawson from Parsons School of Design shed some light. This is an example of what's called a paca in Guatemala, and it's one of the, um, I would say, one of the primary reasons why indigenous people have stopped wearing their traditional costume is because it's way cheaper to come and buy secondhand used clothes that is imported from the States, sold here really cheap. They can sell what they have made and been, uh, have been wearing for decades for more money, and then that allows them to buy more clothes for their family. ¿Cuánto tiempo por far una camisa cosí? Un mes para hacer toda la elaboración, desde hacer los conos de hilo. One of the things that I found out yesterday talking to the artisans is that most of them take one week or uh, one month to create a garment like this. And the weaving, it takes so long for them. And it's very difficult for, to understand how do they calculate that price and the cost. What is, you know, how can you help them and support them in that? That's, I think, one of the largest challenges for this sector is that artisans are paid per piece. They're not paid a wage uh, or a salary. Um, and very often that wage is calculated sort of what they think they might get at the market to, um, for that good. And so we created a methodology and a system that we train the artisans on how to um, do time motion studies to ensure they really understand the time that it takes to produce and then calculate that either with a minimum wage or a fair wage um, to ensure that the per piece rate is at least minimum, if not fair. Todo este trabajo nos lo enseñó mi mamá, mi abuela. Desde los siete años empezamos a, a trabajar con cosas pequeñas. Ya después empezamos a a tener más experiencia y hacemos huipiles y hacemos otras cosas. How can we put this on sale when somebody took two months to do it? It's just irrespectful for the work of these people. As this history of textiles is revealed to me, I have to admit I'm amazed by the connections between the artisans and their craft. Herminia Ramos explains more. Nosotros, cuando éramos pequeñas, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco años, siempre trabajábamos en el algodón y de los doce, trece años nos decían, hay que trabajar en el telar. Esto es el trabajo que nos enseñó nuestra madre. Educación no tenía. Mi mamá me decía, no hay que salir, no hay que hablar. Mira, vinieron la gente de lejos, les van a robar. Y nosotros nos metíamos abajo de nuestra cama para que no nos roben, nos decía. Pero al contrario, el trabajo que nosotros hacemos es para dar a conocer que es el tesoro que tenemos nosotros, que ese es el aliento de nuestras manos, de nuestros productos, de nuestra cultura que tenemos que darle a conocer hoy en día. Pero esto es el sabor de las manos de ellos, eso es el corazón que sale por dentro de ellos, en la mente, el conocimiento de ese el color, el diseño que ellos tienen. Por eso de que hoy en día estamos rescatando nuestro trabajo de nuestra cultura de San Juan. Throughout a career, Donna Karen has established many relationships with artists and producers. She has seen the opportunities and risks up close. Donna, you spoke a lot about the expectation of the artisans. It's one of your main concerns. You've done a lot of work about it. Um, how do we protect them? It's not a question of protecting them. It's their expectations. If you want to continue your work, it can't work that way. Yes, we want to give people jobs. But the beauty of the artisans is their creativity. And to sustain their creativity. And for me, as a designer, it's my job to be able to take them to the next level, not to expect these huge orders, not to expect um, a variance that, you know, you're, this is one season, this is another season. These people's spirit and soul, they're not designing from a season. 
there's a heritage, there's a spirit. And we want to maintain that, but we also want to grow it. The future is education. How do we take education into the cultures of the past? I would love to see the designers going into the fields to work with these artisans, to capture something that has not been captured yet. But there is another consideration here. How do designers avoid cultural appropriation? And how do we ensure true collaboration? I think the key word that you used is collaboration. And when there's collaboration with uh, indigenous communities who are in the culture and who have these techniques and designs, there is a non-issue around appropriation. I think the issue arises when the indigenous person is absent from the design. So when somebody travels, is quote unquote inspired, goes back to their studio, wherever they're living, and then creates something that looks exactly like what they saw, but the indigenous community is not benefiting at all from learning, from income generation, from exposure, I think that's where the, that's where the line is. And so we see big famous designers and brands committing that mistake. And, uh, and here, I think we see beautiful examples of, um, of that collaboration, which in fact then can support the idea of cultural appreciation and not appropriation. UNESCO has estimated craft production to account for $34 billion in global exports. But as Vivian Perez tells me, for these artisans, it represents so much more. Lo que tratamos aquí es de que no se pierda nuestro tejido, nuestro color, nuestro trabajo, que es una fuente de economía también para el pueblo y que ayuda en educación, salud, en la casa para las mujeres. Lo que queremos es que todo el mundo vea todo lo que nosotros tenemos, lo que nosotros miramos en nuestro alrededor y que no se pierda para la juventud, para otras generaciones. Now is our turn to impress. Can we also convince the artisans that we are truly invested in change? Fashion is at a point right now of uh, big change. There's so much clutter, there's too much out there, and we need to fix that. And as the CEO of the CFDA and a representative for American designers, we're committed to that. We're committed to sustainability uh, and working with people, investing in people, like artisans here in Guatemala. The marketplace uh, has so much new, 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 what's next, what's next. And when you look at the craftsmanship and the talent that's here with artisans in, in Guatemala, there's a real opportunity for American designers to distinguish themselves from other designers by really connecting to those artisans. When we look at the artisan's market, it's a $32 billion business according to the Artisan Alliance. I think with the coalition, we all could accomplish and be leaders together from going to 32 billion to 64 billion. Actualmente existen muchos grupos de artesanos, de tejedoras en Guatemala, y existen muchas maneras de ayudarlos. Pero también existen muchas personas que tratan de ayudar de una manera que no es del todo la correcta. Por ejemplo, comprando una vez al año o dos veces al año y revendiendo Podemos ayudarles dos veces o una vez al año, pero de esta manera no sería la manera más inteligente o eficaz de poder ayudar a estas personas. Esa es una pieza de arte donde el verdadero artista queda completamente atrás. La manera indicada, correcta, para poder ayudar a estas personas, a estos artesanos, a esta gente talentosa a poder brillar, es incluyéndolos. Es proponiendo ideas, pero no solo proponerlas, sino también escucharlos. Uno tiene que compartir y compartiendo uno también va a aprender y se va a aprender de gente con mucho talento, con muchísimo conocimiento. Entonces aquí la respuesta es co-crear, co-crear y no perder el hilo, hacer equipo y de esta manera en que uno hace equipo que todos los días esto se vaya fortaleciendo, que sea un intercambio de conocimiento y que este intercambio de conocimiento ayude a ambas partes. Witnessing the connection between artisan, heritage, legacy and craft has left a profound impression on me. This fashion scape must be cherished and protected, not just for fashion, but for all humanity. It is that important. No, 
nombre es Martina, Jamie, Catarina, Catarina, Juliana, Catarina, Carmen, María, Norma, Elena, Soy Pedro García, Jessica, Andrea, Sandra, Elsa, Sonia, Violeta, Jacqueline, Abel, Adelina, Capo, Techoy, Gayling, Yesmidiana, Wendy López, Floridalma, Susana, Lesbia, Yosbeda, Gómez, y López, María de los Ángeles, Juliana, Brito, María López, Elizabeth, Nahuatl, Zapagay, Alejandro, Díaz, Flora, María, Elena,